let's talk bears. We're, I think we're ready. We're ready. Okay. So my name is John Habakon. I am the former president, former, former, former president of the club. Um, but uh, in my past life, I went up before I retired. I was a park ranger. I worked down in the river. Worked a lot with fish and game. Uh, we trap bears. We trap mountain lions. We trap deer. We put down deer. <laughs> Skunks, uh, you name it, um, anything that uh, people had conflicts with, we we had to deal with. So, uh, had had some interesting things. I met a lot of biologists, the wildlife biologists, and uh, had to figure out why certain animals died and things like that. So we didn't have crappies crappies on them, and and uh, learned a lot about that kind of stuff. So I'll try to spill some of my knowledge. Um, Say I'm I'm an old park ranger. I retired eight years ago, so but I, I remember some of it. And I just recently talked to the biologist down at the the Cal California Fish and Wildlife, and uh, he helped me up upgrade my slides here a little bit. So El Dorado County, if you're trying to run bees out here, there are bears out here. You, you might think you're down in El Dorado Hills and not have any problems. There's problems down there. We had problems with the bears in Folsom, so. Even though there's a lot of houses and stuff, there if there's a corridor they can get corridor that they can get through, they're gonna go through it, and uh, you run into the bears anywhere. Out here, it's more susceptible. Um, we I usually get a whole lot more calls on our little hotline on the website about somebody having bear problems. This year, it's been way down, um, and I've talked to some of the growers up in Apple Hill, and they said they're just overrun with apples this year and the bears are just having a party with the, the apples. So, um, so that's a good thing for us. The bears are busy eating the apples and, or other, other fruits and, and we're um, not having to deal with that as much. So um, let's see. So we'll just do a quick facts about black bears, the cause human, human conflicts, how to avoid them how to secure your bee boxes, which we're here about, and, and then of course, electric fencing and what they do for adverse conditioning. So let's go to the next page. So basically, bear, we're in the bear ter territory, so we're kind of responsible for what we do on, on our property and, and how, how we take care of them. Say we're gonna run into bears, um, but there are ways we can uh, live with them um, uh, and a lot of it is that adverse conditioning, trying to get that the bear to stay stay away. Um, it gets real hard for a lot of people, that, especially now we're taking our food waste and we're putting it out right out in the middle of the, <laughs> the road every every week and or every other week, and and that's just like bears going, I'm ready. So so they're they're having a lot more parties with the garbage cans too. So it makes it really a little more challenge if you're trying to get rid of the bears and all of a sudden you're putting your food waste out there and the bears are going after them again. Um, so there's always a, a good for, food source for them around. Um, let's see, there we go. Bat, black bears, there are two, there used to be three, types of bears in California. The California black bear is the main main bear that's in California. Um, there's also the Northwestern black bear or they call it the Olympia black bear also that uh, is more than kind of the north northern part of California. But the one we deal with is the California. Of course, the grizzly extend a long, a long time ago. You're not gonna see a grizzly in California. Yay. <laughs> uh, there are about 35,000 bears in, in California, um, and they can range from everywhere in black. Sometimes you'll see a blonde bear, or, or but either black or brown. The brown bear is still a black bear. It's just a, a breeding DNA trait. Let's see. Yep. Next. There we go. Uh, male, male bears are called boars, and female sows. Uh, they're all pretty good climbers. They can climb the tiniest tree and and, uh, and and get up in a lot of amazing places. Um, they can go up to 800 pounds, so they can be pretty big bears. The ones I've seen around here, three to 400 pounds are still a big bear. But uh, yeah, so they, they average around 300 pounds. Um, of course, the black bear is the smallest of all the Amer North American bears, um, which Still, 300-pound bear is, is a big bear. 
So they are, they're om omnivores. They will eat anything that they can find. They'll go after fish. If, they, if there's a river going through, they, they'll catch a fish like you saw that first picture. Um, but they'll eat berries. They'll eat garbage. They're, they'll eat anything that they can get their 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 teeth into. Uh, they are really good at picking up the scent of protein and the scent that those baby bees and all have a nice protein pill for them. So um, they're, they're good at picking up that scent and that's really in the, especially in the fall, that's what they're looking for is to build up their, their storage in the winter time. Um, yeah, it, they'll, they'll dig in the ground, eat worms, um, anything that they can find really. Um, yeah, given, um, they, yeah, they have a good sense of smell. They can smell seven times better than most animals. Um, they can pick up the scent of a hive within a mile. So even way off your property, they can, they can, they can smell it and then they can find it. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, they will eat the honey, although their main reason for going after your hives is they want those baby bees. They like that protein. So uh, the more that they can gorge on them, the, the, the more they're going to build up their food winter stores. Um, I have to look back and see. What I'm... Okay. Um, yeah, the other way. That, you know, back so forward, forward, forward. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so they can produce one, you typically you see maybe one or two cubs. They can produce a, up to four cubs in, in a season. They will do it every every other year, the, the mother will, can can have a baby. And so it's not every year that they can go, it every every two years. Um, the bee, bears down here don't really hibernate. It's a little bit warm, um, they'll, they'll hang out and um my my they, they'll see you can still see them around in the dead of winter because there's not a whole lot of snow down here and they're not worried about getting cold and things so they don't hibernate as much as uh the ones that are further up six seven thousand feet um so so they don't you won't they may not even have a den they'll just uh sit under a tree um, yep and the, the Cubs will stay with them for a couple of years, and then they they're on their own from there. Okay. Um, it's I, yeah. So the uh, the mother is basically the one that teaches the all the bad habits to the babies. <laughs> so so and she'll she'll send the the mothers uh, the babies a lot of times first and gone. There's a car. <laughs> Show me how to get how you get into it. <laughs> Um, so we've had a few human conflicts, mostly it's, uh, uh, somebody really scaring the bear. Um, and, um, they're not really, they're, they'd rather go the other way. Um, sometimes if uh, they're being chased or if you, you get them trapped in a spot, then they're going to, of course, defend themselves. They always say don't cross between a mother and the, and the cub because, Again, they they may may protect themselves. Um, and then, if you let them give them easy access to your hives, they're going to keep coming back. So, no fun. And um, I've had a few people bring their hives after their their bees have been attacked by a bear because the bear bear will just keep on coming back no matter what. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, you really have to pick up the hive and take it away and keep it away for probably a month or a month and two months just to get the, the bear to know that it's it's not there anymore because they'll keep on coming back and just keep tearing the bees apart. Um, so if it happens, plan on trying to pick up, put your bee, beehive together and, and move it out for a while. And uh, then you could try well, we'll talk about the electric fence and, and how to try to teach teach that bear that this is the wrong place to be too. 
Um, so they, of course, uh, if you have dogs, it, it can help. Um, I, I've got two big dogs on my property. Um, it, I think it does help. They're, they're urinating all over the property and, and everything else. So that I think the bear can pick up that scent and uh, it's in now uh, big fence, electric fence, uh, man with a shotgun, <laughs> two giant dogs. <laughs> and so I haven't had any problem. No wood to knock on. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> um, but um, dogs could help, although it, they could, the bear could also turn on the dogs if they're, they're f feeling really threatened, and they'll rip your dogs apart. So I like any kind of wildlife. Deer could do the same thing. If they're threatened and, and they're trying to find a way out, they're just going to get in that attack mode, and they're going to go. So um, there hasn't been a fatal bear attack in a long, long time in, in California. Uh, it, it generally just doesn't happen. Most of the time, they're going to turn tail and run as, as soon as they can. But they're big, and if they're feeling threatened, there's that potential that they could. Grizzly bears, that's a different thing. Yeah, you're you're food to them. So, <laughs> but then for for us, you're they're, they don't consider you a, a predator, or they consider you a predator, but they don't consider you a uh, uh <laughs> candy candy bar <laughs> um so if uh if you're a couple of basic things if their bear is in your home they get that lot in lake tahoe especially if it's a vacation home bears kind of find their way in and and make make themselves at home there but if you find a bear coming into your home call 911 yeah get get somebody out there quick Deputies will do what they can, but they you generally will try to call fish and game and and uh, take care of it. In those cases, they're probably going to do the depredation, take the bear down, and just because uh, that's a, not a good habit that they want the bear to have. Um, other, the electric fences, motion detectors, um, lights work pretty well. I, I know a few people have put up motion lights and. Uh, that, that'll scare them off a few times, um, but it, yeah, it, it, a, a lot of it could be just a, a combination. Um, they make the motion dog barkers too that uh, that might might help too. But it seems like the electric fence is probably the the best thing that we've had so far for uh, deterring bears. Um. Yeah, so that's pretty much the same thing. So how does electric fence work? It's an open circuit. So um, I've got like, these are three positive lines and this is the ground line and close. And so it's completely open the minute the bear touches, uh, well, in my case, the ground is a, gra is a hot line. Um, we, we usually drive a pole way into the ground um, to, to charge the ground itself and then keep the, the other positive lines above and the minute it touches it it gets that shock it travels from its nose through its paws or a um, couple ways that you can you can do it but that's basically it it's just an open line and the minute they touch it they it's a closed line and they get the big shock um so the energizer which i have it's one, one of these charge box, you can get it. There's a variety of charge boxes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the different types because it does make a difference. Um, of course, the wires and then a grounding rod. Grounding rods are about four feet long. So you got to get some way to drive that into the ground. Um, a lot of problems I've seen with the, the using a ground is uh, a part of your your negative thing is sometimes the ground is so dry that it won't send a charge through it. So um, some people put chicken wire in the ground and along the fence line, and and that helps because uh, at least the the negative ground can travel through the chicken wire and they step on the chicken wire and it does the same thing type thing. So so if you have really dry ground, then that might be a way to to counter that. So different fence chargers. Um, 
you can get a fence charger at Home Depot or, or Tractor Supply. There's not a whole lot of charge in there. Um, it may work the first time and chase that bear off and give it give a decent shock. And they do give, even the small ones will give a decent shock. My dog finds them all the time and he'll be gone for, <laughs> he'll stay away from it for, for a few weeks. And, but, um, so it'll, it, it's the tractor supply ones, they're really good for goats and sheep and, and the smaller animals. Bears can just barrel right through it. And they, if they don't get a, a real good shock, a lot of times they're just not going to, that won't do anything. Um, highly recommended. Um, some the piece type here are like 0.3 to 0.5 joules. Um, they really say between three to seven joules is enough to, to put a bear on its butt. So, um, and it's hard to find those in California. Um, you can order them online. Parmac is probably the, the biggest uh, for the, even the, the solar fence, fences or, or you can, you can buy plugins that uh, will carry a bunch of more, a lot more jewels on it, but the, the solar ones are a little harder to find that with that much jewels on it. And the only one I found so far is Parmac is uh, the one that really can have that if you wanted a, a standalone so solar charger. Um, so they say it's nice and convenient to go to tractor supply and pick one up, but um, it might just be a temporary thing. And so I mean, might consider that. Might keep the uh, raccoons and the skunks away though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so different uh, ways of doing it. You can keep the ground negative and then put positive charges on, on the, all the lines up there. Or you can put a negative, positive, po negative, positive. And the whole idea of that is it's going to get shocked somewhere in there. Um, so if it's putting its face on, on one, one line, uh, it, yeah, so whatever it's touching is going to give it another shock. If, and if you have that dry ground, that might be another way to do it is uh, that way, you know, you're going to have a, a positive charge on it or a, a good, jolt on there when it when it finds you so um let's see again the grounding rod um you should go out after you put it all together and test your lines you see yeah mine's blinking right there <laughs> uh there's a few different kinds of of these you can get it uh tractor supply or home depot or uh at most hardware stores have them also um these are adequate. You can see the light. Sometimes if it's real bright, it's hard to see. Uh, this one here is a, it's a digital one, so it's a little easier to see, but uh, you just stick it out on, on and it, it'll start giving you the reading right there. And you know, it, it works and you don't have to touch it. <laughs> so, but that's another way to test it <laughs> if you want to. Um, <laughs> Weeds and things like that is a real good idea to try to keep the weeds off away from the uh, the fence. One is there is a small chance that you could start a fire with it. Very small chance, but uh, since it's dry brush and there's a charge on there, if it shorts out, it, it it may be able to start a fire. It's best just to take the weed eater and clear, the, clear around and uh, make it available easier for the bear to find. Um, oh, electric gate fencing. Yeah. So how are you going to get in there without, with the, they all wrapped up. They do make some spring type, uh, gates that you can put on there and, and keep the gate, the area charged up there. So, uh, I generally, I, I go about four, four to five feet, four feet. It seems to be ideal, but the, the bears aren't going to get up high usually they're they're walking on all fours and they're not any really any higher than four feet so a four fin four foot fence will work ideally um six inches six to eight inch distance between the wires uh works if you're trying to get smaller critters also i go a little bit lower and go six inches and and that way that they'll tend to stay out of there too um baiting uh which 
again, if you've already had a problem and the bear is coming back, um, one of the ways you could help and try to deter them is you could hang a piece of bacon on the, on the line, or I've got a piece of foil, put some peanut butter on the foil, and they come over and they lick it. They get a nice good shock on their mouth. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a learning type thing. They have to learn that, uh, give them that adverse behavior. And so they think, oh, okay, I'm not staying here. So um, there's different kinds of wiring. Also, you can get some that are more visible which a lot of times they're gonna see that more than uh, just the wire. Uh, so that, that can help too, if they, they get a good shock and they, they, they relate that thicker wire or th thicker um, tape on there. Um, and they, even if it's on on, sometimes they'll just see it and say, I know what that is. So, so that, that would help out quite a bit too. Um, so the adverse conditioning, if, um, we're going to do what we can to, to try to get them all away on their own, but sometimes it just doesn't work or that be, bear just keeps on coming back. Call fishing game. Um, they have some other methods that they can try to, to deter the bear or get it out of there. Um, they don't want to kill the bear. They want to do something to try to get it, drive it away. So they're going to try different things. They'll try the sound devices and just bla blast them with uh, different noises again barking dogs or shotgun sounds and things like that um they've used the rubber slug shots where they uh just put them in their their shotgun and, and shoot at the bear doesn't hurt the bear i know they do it a lot back in uh and especially in the hiking trails where where they're a big problem that they'll bring out the shotgun and they'll just uh get every time they see the bear they'll shoot it and and, and try to teach it a lesson there and get to, that it's not going to come back Pepper spray is another way of doing it. Um, yeah, and that they have the big cans of pe bear spray if you're hiking and things. I don't know if I'd want to try that or not. I think I just. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, tranquilizing, they'll tran tranquil trank it or they'll put, bring out their big bear traps, which they have, and try to draw it into a, a trap and, and then relocate the bear. Problem is, the bears are pretty smart, they figure out where. They you were living at, and they had a pretty good life there, so they come right back. So, um, so a lot, a lot of that sometimes help. Of course, the last thing is depredation, where they're going to take it out. Um, big question is, can you take it out? Yes, you can. Um, if it's harming livestock, and bees are considered livestock, they don't. They're like little tiny cows. <laughs> <laughs> But they are considered livestock, and um, so if they are damaging your crop or your livestock, yes, you can they get your rifle out, and you can take them out if you had to. You're supposed to report it. I know a lot of people don't report it. It's basically some people don't ask, don't tell, and dig a big hole, and the bear is gone. But technically, you're supposed to report that. <laughs> and you can bear on your own without it any kind of going into a better you can because it's a safety issue. Okay. Um, you can call fish and game and tell tell say this this bear was killing killing my my crop or my bees or or went after my goats. Um, yes. So it they they may not be happy about it, but but the, they're going to say you had to do what you had to do. So it, it's best to. If you have a bear problem, get a hold of Fish and Game, and they'll they'll give you some steps, and and they may. The ideal thing is they give you a depredation permit ahead of time, and then you say, okay, I'm I'm covered by them. <laughs> yeah. If I have to kill this bear, it, it, then you're better off that way. Right. Um, so there's a lot of depredation permits taken out. Um, not a whole lot of bears have lost their lives uh, compared to how many are the permits are coming out which is good um so again the different reasons for depredation and you can see eight eight percent of those those permits are for beehives so okay 
So, yeah, they're they're saying the Fed bear is a dead bear. So, if they're getting into your garbage and eating the Taco Bell food, and they're it's not really good for them. It, it, it eventually it can kill them just just by eating eating all our our bad food. So, this is just if you see somebody poaching. Cal tip number, they, it still is a, a good viable number. If you see any anything, um, you can, can leave, leave an anonymous tip if you need to, and 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 they'll follow up on it. They, they're really good at that. Of course, this is fish and wildlife um, information. If you had a needed a depredation permit, you can call that number or go online and, and get that that information. They want to help. They're the fishing game aren't the bad guys. They, they want to protect the bears. They want to protect the wildlife, but they 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 understand that we have to we have our lifestyle too, and our 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 this is our products and our food and, and our property. So so there. That's it. Questions? I have a question. Okay. So uh, if you happen to take down a bear on your property and you have the depredation permit, uh, what happens then? You've got now this, you know, potentially 800 pound animal on your property. Are you supposed to dispose of it yourself? Can you reclaim, you know, meat and process the bear? What are the limitations there? <laughs> I would call fish and game and let them, they, they may say, go ahead and dress the bear out and, and, use it but uh call them first and uh um let let them tell you what to do on that so yeah and it, it's they may just treat it like they do roadkill if you find a fresh kill you're you're welcome to it but but if, if you had to kill it it's on your property that they say well easiest way to get rid of it is if you want to take care of it otherwise they're going to put it in their truck and Take it down to Rancho Cordova the, the, there and feed the rest of their trapped or caged critters that are down there. <laughs> so it doesn't go to waste. <laughs> right, right, right. Thanks, John. That's at the beginning. I'm sorry, I can't release really it. It should be down here. Nope, okay. next one. There we go. Okay, anything else? What about how does the electric fence work with smaller, smaller critters, like anything else, smaller, like raccoons or? It, it works well with them. Okay. It, it'll keep them out of there um, because uh, they have to get through the same same thing. And, and usually on my, my line, the, the bottom one is always high. So it's a positive line, and they have to get through there, either crawling over the top of it or or under it, and then and they get a pretty good zap. So so it works quite well for the little raccoons and the skunks. So and if anyone's had skunk problems and bees, and they're pretty voracious too, and they'll just sit at the front of your hive and just kind of gorge themselves. They're kind of coming out. So so yeah, if you can deter them, that's a, that's a good thing too. electrical charge is 7,000 volts yeah on this system um it's 7, one one joule is 7,000 so yeah i've got like this. it's always 7,000 but it's just the amount of the current going through that 7,000 i mean if the volts are the same but the amperage the uh, amperage, the yeah. amperage yeah yeah so the then the higher amperage you have the more of a a shock you're gonna get. Quick point. If you're gonna do an electric fence with uh, a battery and solar panel, uh, you might wanna look at getting a marine battery with a, a deep cell marine battery uh, to help keep the charge uh, better than say a standard car battery, which can't take the full discharge and re full recharge as well as a marine battery can. We're good. 
I'm back. <laughs> okay, so uh, I had a request that uh, talk about my my chapstick and how I make it and things and and uh, it, other. I we only actually use bees wax for a couple of our products that we sell on our, at the lavender farm. But um, so I I thought well it's pretty simple. But there's a lot of other products I realize that uh, we could talk about and and what other things that we could actually get from not just honey but there's actually some other different products that we get we can uh get from the bees so i thought we'd uh kind of touch on some of that uh a variety of honeys of course we have the extracted honey with our extractor um and then honeycomb itself just just the comb uh chunk honey is basically honeycomb that's inside you you have take your honeycomb and you put honey in it. And so you see the big honeycomb inside. And a lot of people really like, like to have, see their, buy their honeycomb in there. Um, the creamed is whipping the honey into a more of a, a, like a butter. And then of course, mead is the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Getting, getting it to ferment a little bit and uh, and then making some wonderful uh, things, which we will try and at our social or winter social, we're, we're doing doing the winter, bringing bringing back the meads to try out some more. Um, so pollen traps, that's one one way of uh, one thing you can capture is a pollen. They are basically getting the uh, pollen is the be the bees that are filled. With, in the spring with uh, all that pollen that they're bringing in and you're I only have one this is for an eight frame hive but it's basically uh they're going to go you set this on the front of the hive you're going to block the the main entrance there and you have to actually build another entrance so they can go in, in, in a little higher but this blocks up the front of the hive um the bees are going to crawl through here and it knocks the pollen off as, as they're crawling through and of course, and this thing has a little drawer. Oh, that's, I found beer. I was looking for my chest. <laughs> it's right there. So it'll fill up uh, in here and then you can collect the pollen. Um, can be medicinal. Um, it's I'm kind of like my, the people in my la lavender when they're using the oil and saying, saying, is this good for this? You know, is this medicinal? And I say, well, I'm not a doctor. I can't, <laughs> so. So pollen can be medicinal. Um, it, it's supposed to have a lot of different qualities in it, a lot of extra nutrients. Same with all these other products that uh, we use, uh, pollen or propolis or royal jelly. They are all have some, some things that we don't have in our bodies a lot of times or, or extra, extra nutrients like that. So it's just one of those things. You can turn around, you can collect pollen and you can manufacturer sell it put it in a bottle and label it and, and sell sell the uh pollen or use it yourself but doesn't that impact what the bees are doing they're bringing it in you have to do it when the honey the when the pollen flow is big so in the spring you don't want to do it in july or august so you take the take that pollen trap off um this is an old pollen trap uh they make some nice new ones these plastic ones oh, plastic ones here they're they work Quite the, the basically the same thing, but they have this now has a little flip door so you can flip it up so you can leave the trap on there. And then okay. if it's a good flow, you flip it down and the bees are going through and, and capturing that pollen. So, so could be another fun thing that you could get from your, your bee, bees, but I would do it when there's a, a lot of pollen out and they're bringing in a lot of pollen and you don't want to deprive your bees, of course. So our next one, propolis. Um, that's a sappy stuff that they put around the edges of the, uh, of the hive at the top of the hive. So when you're trying to pull the lid off, it doesn't come up and you have to pry it with your, your tool, hive tool. Uh, you can actually collect that and, uh, same idea and use it for medicinal. Uh, they use actually, I, I think they use a the queen excluder is the same thing, but they'll put, and you can go to the next page here also. So you can put it on your instead of the inner cover you put that on there and they will build propolis on that you take that whole thing when it's filled up you can take it put it in your freezer and then you just 
knock it off and it's an easy way to collect the propolis off there. So um, the royal jelly is a little tougher. Um, you're going to have to go to the the special bees if if you're uh, getting if you're gro growing queen bees, uh, you can get a lot of propolis out there, but you're sacrificing those larvae. You're going to have to pull the larvae out so you can get the, the royal jelly out of there. Um, and it's going to take quite a bit if you, if you're using it for a product. If you're using it for yourself again, it's uh, it might be may, something that you are interested in trying to get is uh, just getting royal jelly out, out of there. So, and I probably use the same little, oh, where's my, the little spoons that they use for, for pulling the, uh, or moving larvae around, you can scoop that in and scoop it out and, and put it in a jar. Uh, bee bread. Bee bread is uh, the combination of different things that they bring in and mix and make it, make a nice meal for them. This is going to tear apart a frame, though, when you, you're trying to get bee bread, because you're basically digging in each one of those cells and, and pulling out the bee bread so you can use it yourself. Again, it's uh, you want to make sure that you're not taking a whole lot away from the bees. You want to do it when there's a, a big pollen run that's going on. So, um, also, you can put that same idea, put it in the freezer and and knock it out that way it would be a little easier this is what i do with my my beeswax i use the top bar hide because i get a whole lot more nice real nice wax and i don't have to scrape it off the uh the frames so um that's why i i do top bar hides is just so i can get that wax i don't care so much about the honey so. um it works it's pretty simple um the the one thing with the getting wax is you're going to have to melt it um, find a way to melt it. Uh, I have a solar wax melter down here. It works. It works okay. Um, it's got to be a pretty warm day on there to get it to melt. Um, if you look at it, it's kind of a. I, I can't bring it up to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's built at an angle, so it it naturally drops down and then and drops in there. Um, a lot of times you're going to get everything that's in that that frame though if you put a frame in there and, and melt it down uh, you're going to get all the bee parts and everything in there so you got to find a way that you're going to filter that out and it's probably better to filter it in after after the fact this is what i have to collect my uh my wax down there so i, I put it in there these uh rubber things work really well because it's the the wax doesn't attach to it, so you can pop it right out. The thing I don't like about this is it has these ribs on the bottom of it, and so it it collects all the. It seems like all the the little bee parts and things ended up down there, and so and so it was really hard to get that away from uh, the other. Uh, I found this, which is doesn't have the ribs on it, and it collects pretty well on there, and I can still just pop out the cubes and and use it. Um, I, after I collect the wax, I, uh, then try to filter it out af after the, the fact. So I'll get, uh, I like cheesecloth, cheesecloth works really well and I can filter it through there. Um, I'll move. Here. I found, I used to use a double boiler to melt down the wax. This is a whole lot easier. You can, uh. Adjust the heat. You don't want to overheat wax. If you go over, if it's 100 and 108 or something like that, uh, it starts losing its properties. And and if you really turn it up real high, it just makes the wax weird. Weird. So, um, so you want to something that they're not going to over overheat the wax itself. And that's what I like about this. What well, double boiler does fine too. Um, and you can always use a little thermometer on there and and keep an eye on uh, when when it's there so you don't overheat too much but this i can just set to that right setting and, and it'll melt it and i don't have to worry about it um over overheating it plus 
I can put this right here and <laughs> just pour it in. <laughs> so, so what is that? This is it's a wax melter. It's actually yeah, you can actually get it at Man Lake. Or you can get them on, I think I got mine on Amazon Amazon, but no, but Man Lake does sell sell these little products. It, it's a whole lot cleaner than double boiling. Um, because wax can be a mess too, and, and at least uh, this kind of keeps it all in one place and, and you don't you're not making a big mess trying to pour wax into the, the, the forms and stuff. So I like it a lot, and plus that that temperature setting that I can I can use on there. Um, so I I have got some uh, recipes that I use. Uh, you're welcome to use them as much. I, I can email you the recipes if you want, um, but uh, I'll I'll bring it up here in a minute. But uh, but I, I I use the wax for well one you can use it for candles. Um, that you just pour it into a candle form with your your wick in there and, and it, this will make it simple for that too but probably the big thing is to make sure that you do filter out the bug parts because uh, they, they look ugly in the candles <laughs> they burn nicely <laughs> how do you filter them what's that how do you filter them i i i use cheese cloth actually i will i will put the cheese cloth on this part of it and I'll put that in there and let it melt through the cheese cloth, and that captures it pretty good. And if I, if if I get anything that filters through that, I'll I'll take it through a second second uh, melting and do it again. But most of the time, I it's just using the cheese cloth is enough to get it through. Some people use uh, other real fine stuff. The problem with the pantyhose, I know some people use that, but when you're dealing with heat and pantyhose, it's gonna melt. There, there's a chance that it's gonna melt. So. Um, some real fine meshes, some metal meshes too, that they can be a mess because it, the wax will stick to, to it quite a bit. So John, I, I well, melted some down in an old crock pot, like uh -huh. small, and I put it into a form, or no, I didn't, I put it into like a styrofoam cup because that, that was what was recommended, like to just kind of let it cool. And um, I ended up with like, at the very bottom, like almost like a really thick, Maybe some honey. Maybe some Could honey. be, yeah. So, now, I, I have not had success with that. It did not work. And uh -huh. so I was just straining. So is there any other way of trying to separate the wax first? Or you just do that and you, because I mean, when you do that, you can take the wax, the wax all goes to the top. Right. Then you just remove the honey and then I can remelt it and do it again. Yeah. But Yeah, it's basically just you. Try yes, to just keep okay, filtering so it out. If you got the honey in there, you can you can take the wa the wax and just wash it with water and and uh, wash right. it. With right, that's true. Okay, that's true. Yeah, and then I found too if you do that, any tools you use, you can never use <laughs> on anything else. You yeah, know, wax dries in like ten seconds. I mean, it starts to you know as you're pouring it through. Yeah, kind of yeah, you're basically. Uh, a short window. If you're using any spoons or anything, you've basically sacrificed them. Yeah. So yeah. that the like the glass contain yeah, ridiculous out. But that I like that. That's good. Um that's where thrift stores I think are outstanding options for finding things. If you want to do like a boiling or you want to use anything for wax. Go hit your thrift stores up and you can find a lot of equipment there for very cheap that you can dedicate just to wax melting. That's a good idea. Um, oh, it's another one, Venom venom Stings. Uh, we actually have some people that are coming to some of our beekeepers and asking to be stung. Asking to be stung. <laughs> so, so, but they they also do it uh, the way they can actually uh, use some kind of electric shock and get, get the, the bees to secrete the, the venom out. I, that's probably a little little beyond us, but, but I, I do know there's some people that have... Uh, Using sting therapy for for whatever is ailing them, and they're they're coming daily or weekly and, and putting their hands in the, the beehives and getting stung. And... <laughs> so it's there, <laughs> and and we do have get get calls on there our little hotline every once in a while for somebody looking for something like that. So if anybody's interested, I can pass on pass it on. <laughs> so Queen's another. 
big business actually uh, making your own queens and a lot of people are making queens and selling them they're selling them 35 40 40 bucks a queen um, just for the the queen cell itself where you can get get the live ones uh, there's a variety of ways of doing it one is using you you can go to your hive and you can take uh, the fresh eggs and you scoop egg the the fresh eggs this is a the little tool that uh, a little I can't remember what it's called somebody knows but it's a, a little Chinese tool that uh, you can reach in there and you scoop up the larvae and then you put it in the queen cup and then um, and then you put it in 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 a queenless hive and the, then the babies are thinking or the other worker bees are saying okay we don't have a queen. We've already got the larvae here and they, they start building it. Um, this here is a thing that you can do an artificial queen cup. You put the cups in there and you put the larvae inside the cups and then put this in the queenless hive and they will start building new queens. And you're, yeah. you're, you're talking about the, the Chinese grafting tool or the German grafting yes. tool? Thank you. That's what I was trying to think of. So this yeah. is a Chinese, Chinese grafting tool. It's got like a little spring on it so you can... You know, once you get it in there, you can push on it and scoop up the larvae, and then you put it in the queen cup. Um, I have yet to try this, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, one method of uh, making making new queens, and I know a few beekeepers are around here are making some queens and and helping out the rest of the club, or they're they're selling selling queen queen cells to others so they can do that, or the you, you can also. Let them go ahead and build, and you can make uh, some other queens. Um, I know Jim Gilliam's making the uh, uh, mated queens. He's got the uh, little mating box that he's is set aside so the queens will mate, and then then he can take the mated queen and, and sell those. So, so there's a variety of ways of doing that. Um, this here is another way. So, what you do here is um, these are queen the little cups that uh, that actually you put the, the these on here but then you pull it once it has an egg in there you pull it and then you put it back in in one of the queen cells so you're basically trapping the queen in here and let her sitting in there for a couple of days in there and she's lays eggs in here because she has nowhere else to go and and so you don't have to go out in and take this little tool and try to scoop out the larvae you're artificially making her lay eggs in here and then you're you're moving it that way so so there's different ways of getting at um again i haven't tried it but i may try it this year and see how i do <laughs> well, john there's a question online asking are there is there any queen making happening at the club hives um no not right now i know jim is doing it um there's a few others around sandy was doing it um but there, there, there are some people that are making queens, um, but that might be something we try at the hive too. And we, we've got um, several hives in there. We could, we could turn one to dedicating, dedicated to making some queens and see how we do, learning about it in ourselves. Okay. So again, we talked about the well wax melters. Some people are using, uh, they're just taking their old ice chests. Works fine. Um, just make sure if you're going to use an ice chest, put it in an uh, angle so it melts somewhere instead of just at the bottom of a pan. Um, so you, you can make up things like that. One thing I tried that was pretty successful was I bought a, on Amazon, a, it was like a portable solar oven, but it folds up. Oh. And um, it has a zipper. And so what you do is those little the metal tray that's inside the the ice chest. So basically I took one and I cut like a bottom, a little piece of the bottom off and then I laid a paper towel on it and that's where I dumped all my cappings. And then basically positioned it over another one of those metal trays and filled it halfway with water and then put that inside of the solar um, oven thingy. And then basically it, it melts it, the, the paper towel actually filters the honey and the yucky stuff and then leaks down to the bottom of the wax, leaks down to the bottom 
through the paper towel into the bog tree of the water, which then kind of keeps all the wax together. And for small amounts, it actually it actually works pretty well. But you're dependent on the weather being the right outdoor temperature in order right. to get it hot enough. You yeah. Get it. Or sometimes it gets too hot too. Oh yeah. And <laughs> so. I did I did find ants. Ants found it really quickly. So that was something else. Yeah. But so if you got an old ice chest, you could try it too, and just get a piece of glass or plexiglass and put it over the top and see how it works. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't think the paper towel absorbs all the wax? No, the wax went right through it. The paper towel absorbed the honey and the bug parts, uh -huh. and the wax went right right through it. It was so weird. Okay, that's totally what I tried. I, I did that. that was, it didn't work. It just it, my uh, paper towel just got really oh. small, and then it like. I, mean, I left it for too long, and then when I came, it was just so hard. You know, it's <laughs> only I have beautiful clean wax in the bottom. Blow it up and put a wick in it. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and I've used um, you know, I, I didn't have cheesecloth. I love cheesecloth for this, like John mentioned, but I I didn't have any on hand, and I've used an old T-shirt, and that worked really good as a filter as well. So here's my lip balm recipe. Um, I like it. A lot of people seem to like it. Uh, it doesn't have to be lavender. You can put any kind of essential oil in it. The, the, um, and peppermint actually is a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so good. <laughs> and if anyone wants it, I can also email it to you. So I, I've got it. But again, got to watch the melting point. Uh, on when you're mixing all this too, um, it, but it, it it makes a nice smooth lip balm. Yeah, and, vitamin E too. That's nice. Yeah, a lot of people are actually getting away from Burt's Bees because I think Clorox bought them out. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, sure. so there there's been a, so, some changes with Burt's Bees that the people aren't real happy with, but it's still. Seems pretty good to me. I, <laughs> and um, so I'm sorry. Oh, so that recipe, how much? Because um, when you buy a kit like that, it comes like what, what fifty tubes or something. Or yeah. How does that? Does that? That help? does about this. Does about fifty. Okay. So fifty. It might be a little bit more than that, but okay. but uh, and those these things are really pretty simple to use. So you're just saying, and again, I, I'm using this and just filling it and covering it and, and let it sit and then pull it off and put the cap on and you're done. So, so do you put it in a, like a, a roll, like the picture, or do you put it in like a small um, metal pin? Uh, I just put it directly on here. Okay. In the tube. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. And it comes with a little scraper or you already can use a spatula and just, oop. Oh. One down. <laughs> you just scrape off the top of it, and then it's it. it they're real simple. Yeah, it's exactly. a it's a fun thing to do if you've got wax and you want to make a good Christmas present. Those are kind of fun little stocking stuffers. <laughs> John, where do you get those? These here, I actually well, I since Man we're Man you Man can get them at Man Lake. They oh. they sell them there. Um, I. Go to, well, we use a bottling company for other things, so and they sell them at the bottling company, I think it's German something bottling company. But uh, so, yeah, Amazon have them there. Amazon white. sells white, yeah. some are white, there's two different sets, and some are clear. Oh, and then I went to, um, I haven't made them yet, but I bought it, yeah. <laughs> and then I went and they had labels made. Yeah, oh, okay. so, so you can get some. You, know, yeah. you, you can get some little labels. They come in a sheet, and then they have a, a little extra tab on there, so it kind of tapes oh, onto the, the yeah. lid there. That way, it's a, okay, it's never been opened. Yeah. Right. So just Amazon to get the stickers, or not the stickers, oh, the stickers. Uh, okay. I have those. If you if you put in in your search yeah. and you just put like put the bottom label labels. That company will come up and the receipts are pretty inexpensive, like you know, five or six dollars each. Yeah. And then the shipping's like fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> then you can get little boxes too. They actually found this. I think it was Etsy that I got them, but oh, awesome. the lady Just lives up in Chico, and so she sent me a bunch of these things. But they they were they're nice to have too. If you get a bunch of them. 
so uh, lavender body butter that's another little product but um just we just put it in a jar and but uh and this one takes just honey so so not not wax but you, so and then the lotion bars is the other one in which this is beeswax it doesn't take a whole lot of beeswax but uh pretty much even with the coconut oil and shea butter um again just melting it down and and, and using that and putting it in a form you can get the all sorts of fancy soap forms on there with some nice designs on them these the the rubber the rubber is great because they just pop right out so i think that's it <laughs> can you say something about what we're supposed to have um for selling honey in do we put on the cottage industry and we don't need any kind of license or do we need a license uh not for honey there there's kind of a uh they they el dorado county doesn't really have any rules on it um they did add it with their to their cottage industry or the cottage permit right. um for for labeling things so so um but if they're not looking into it they're not really enforcing anything on there so um it it helps if i mean if you do have a cottage food license that's certainly going to be a, a bonus if, a, if anything ever changed that, that you'd say well i'm already there so but but you're fine with that yeah yeah no nobody is calling anybody and it's a local product that you're selling just yeah the only thing i'd the the thing with the food cottage food is they do make you go through a few steps about making sure that you're having sterile equipment and sterile bottles and things like that. So may, uh, that would be probably be the the big thing is make sure you're doing using every clean stuff. And John, are you talking about the food safety course you have to take for that? Yeah, we did that too. <laughs> yeah, so there's a. A food safety and handling course that you you can take. They they recommend that, and they'll tell you what you need for that as well. It's not a bad idea if you're going to be selling honey, you know, even if you don't get a permit, the cottage food permit. It, it's just a good idea to make sure that you're having clean stuff, sterile things, and I always have a bunch of paper towels in my because they 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 don't want you to use hand towels every time you you're making something you're supposed to have paper towels there you if you walk away from the kitchen come back you wash your hands use a paper towel and throw it away and don't use your hand towel <laughs> <laughs> so that's my spiel <laughs> thank you Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. They need to teach us how to grow.